Welcome to the Practice You podcast. My name is Elena Brower. Not to collapse, but simply to undo tension. Tension is a theft. Be in adherence with the present moment. When I think about this in relationship to collecting difficult moments, which is the theme of this month, I think about all of the stories that I have repeated in my head time and time again to create what feels like usefulness in my body. All the stories that actually are creating tension, that are stealing energy from me, that I myself have chosen to create. My dear soul brother, young Pueblo, once posted a quote that says, Repeat daily. Notice the stories you hold in your mind. Let go of the ones that cause tension. So this is really what I want to talk about for this particular first episode of the Practice You podcast. What am I adhering to? What am I in contact with? And why am I so afraid to be in contact with what is? Why do I persist in creating stories that do nothing but generate tension in my body? Most of us are used to having a baseline of tension throughout our homes from whether childhood or some other context, perhaps school. And we have subconsciously and unconsciously recreated these tense stories within ourselves, in our bodies, in our minds, in our homes, in our families. And what we have to start seeing is that the the stories that we're making up we can just relax (laughs) against them and start to realize that they're actually these little contradictions that we've thought we needed to adhere to are really just little treasures. I want to collect them and I want to start to see them and be in adherence with them and see what they look like and stop trying to fight with them. And in seeing them as treasures, I can start to release them one at a time, slowly but surely, in the same way that so many of us have been taught to welcome that little child within us who needs our attention, to welcome that 8-year-old, that 9-year-old, that 12-year-old, that 15-year-old whom we shunned when we were that person. But that's still a part of us. That's a moment that I want to collect now. I don't want to to continuously push her away. I don't want to set her aside. I don't want to stop denying that she, that part of me lives inside of me. I want to create a sacred space for her. I want to create a small spot where I can be with her and tell her that everything is okay. And it's not some talking out loud to some force, even though it kind of is. (laughs) It's just a way of being with the parts of myself that I have continuously shunned denied. And in doing so, I'm learning how to create this time for compassion, for managing the most difficult moments. Any of you who have children, you know for sure that you are managing basically all the parts of you that you have been denying as they emerge in your child, in their behavior. And so what hurts in that eight-year-old person, that nine-year-old person. What hurts and what's the lesson in there? Whose attention are we trying to get? What has that attention desire wrought in terms of our career, in terms of our choices of partners, in terms of our choices of home, even our choice of where we live? What hurts and how Every single day, can we look at that, not dramatizing it, not glorifying it, but just seeing it and saying, okay, that still hurts. How can I give that my compassion and my love? I'm practicing with my teacher, Yoga Rupa Rod Striker, on his app. It's called Sanctuary. I also practice with him on Glow, obviously, for years. Take his trainings on Glow, too, but this particular self-compassion meditation on sanctuary has really helped me. I'm on my second, going into my third week of it now. And every single day I'm looking at what 
hurts and what still has not received my full compassion, my full love. I'm looking at how my conception of the divine would want me to feel in light of that pain, in light of that hurt, that sting. And I'm starting to feel the lesson. I'm starting to see how the attention that I always wished I would get as a kid from various different people in my life that I was unable to get for many very good reasons are now, those desires are now driving a lot of my choices. And I'm starting to be able to make better choices because of it. And I'm 48. This has taken a really long time. So this is not an overnight affair. This is really a long, beautiful journey of learning about yourself, learning about what has been painful for you for a really long time that you've sort of been turning away from and trying to just forget about it. So I have a writing assignment and I probably will for most of my podcasts, but you can choose to do it or not. For this particular episode, your mission, should you choose to accept it, is that story. What hurts? What still hurts? What needs your compassion? How old were you when that happened? And it could be not one particular event that happened. It could be something that happened over time. In my case, I always wished I had just a little more attention from my mom. And, and for so many reasons, she just didn't have the bandwidth to give it to me. And she did such a beautiful job in so many ways. This is not a blame game, even a little bit. But that wish for attention has yielded actions, behaviors, and choices that I've made that didn't serve me. For years, it actually fed into my addiction that I had struggled with for so many years of my life, half my life. And write out the story, write it out. For me, when I close my eyes, a lot of times I'm in fifth grade sitting in my classroom and I can see my feet, my little shoes, my little culottes, <laughs> little denim culottes. And I can feel my friend sitting next to me, the one that I liked a lot, his name was Douglas. And I can feel myself wanting him to like me so bad, but I can feel beneath that. It's just me wanting to go home to my mom's arms instead of an empty house. It's just me wanting to find some clarity with regards to what I meant to her because I didn't know. It wasn't clear to me. Now, these are simple things. These are first world problems. These are not massive earth-shattering issues. But for each of us who wishes to help in the world, who wishes to make a difference in someone else's life, who wishes to serve in some way, to get to the source of whatever pain is still lingering within us is actually a really viable endeavor. So what hurts? What's the lesson in there? And can you close your eyes, get a pen, not your computer, not your phone, get a pen and a piece of paper and begin to write. What is that story? Where are you when you look at it? And what's a good response from the person that you are now to that person that's in pain then, that part of you? What is a good response? In my case, when I think about it, I just want to hold that little girl who's sitting in that chair and let her know that she is loved. Let her know what the future holds. Let her know that she is here to help. She is here to serve. And the pain that she feels right now is going to pass. And in repetitively doing that day after day, and I know this sounds really perhaps dramatic or unnecessary to some of you, in repeating this every single day and reminding this little part of myself that in fact she does have love. She will be able to fulfill her mission on this planet. She will know what her mother feel, really feels about her. There's some deep subterranean core healing in it. 
And I'm starting to feel different. I'm starting to feel better. It's only taken a couple of weeks of this repetitive practice and I feel like I'm complaining less. I feel like I'm serving myself more and I feel like in serving myself more, I'm able to do more for the people around me, for my friends, for my team. I'm able to speak more transparently and be more candid about my motivations. I had just yesterday, one of the best conversations I've had with Jonah, who's now 12, in my life, in his life. It might have been the best one where I was perfectly open, honest, vulnerable, and yet completely clear and powerful and almost business-like in my vulnerability about what needs to happen and how. And it was beautiful. And at the very end of it, this is not self-congratulatory, I promise. At the end of it, I said, you know, nobody gives us a map to be parents. Nobody tells us what we're supposed to be doing when certain things happen. And you know, we have no idea if we're doing a good job, really, as parents. We, we don't know. And he kind of leaned back against my little cabinet in my little office, and he looked at me really sweetly, like really open and, and really intent. And he said, Mom, you're doing a great job. You know, everything's going fine with me. I feel really good. <laughs> it was so beautiful. And when I meditated this morning and I did the self-compassion meditation once again, it's short, it's only 10, 11 minutes. And I thought about that, what he said, and I thought about the place where I still feel like I'm not being heard in some way, and I realized it's, it's not real anymore. It's just a part of me that lives in the past. So when you're writing, keep this piece of writing as a map. It's a map to your potential. It's a, a collection of what feels difficult so that you can then move forward and evolve it. It's a very sweet and important liminal space where you're knowing that this part of you that's still in pain is kind of asleep at the wheel. And you're knowing that it's absolutely valid what's being felt yet it's just one part of you. It's not all of you. It's not the entire identity of you. So when it gets challenging, you're writing and you're continuously writing and you're starting to see places in your life where you've made choices that you really would not make again. <laughs> now, knowing what you know, what do you do? What's the momentary response to this difficult moment? You move. Take care of your body, rest, do yoga nidra, eat really good food, go play outside, go run and play in a park, get a frisbee and throw it around with somebody you love. Flow, do a practice on glow, breathe, do some pranayama. Hang with your friends. Reach out to somebody and ask them to be your accountability buddy with regards to this self-compassion meditation. And I'll be sure to include the link and and do it together. Keep your notes together. Ask for forgiveness. Maybe there's someone to whom you need to connect in order to ask for forgiveness. Maybe again. Maybe you need to tell somebody the truth that you haven't told yet. Maybe there's some conflict that you haven't resolved as a result of this pain <laughs> that you're still hosting in your body. And you can sweetly smile at it and say, you know what, I want to I wanna fix this now and get in touch with that person. When it comes to kids, if this is a part of your uh, situation right now and the, the painful aspect of you from the past is now impacting your capacity to be with your kids or your nieces or nephews or even with your parents, can you be more nurturing? Can you be more patient? Can you be more open? Can you let go of some expectation? Can you acknowledge what you're containing out loud to them? Can you forgive when it comes to your parents especially? Or maybe you need to set a loving boundary. Maybe it's time for an apology. Maybe it's time to just make more art. Maybe it's time to go and be inspired by someone else's art and then turn around and collect your materials and make your own. Maybe it's time to let this particular part of you that still hosts pain 
out onto a canvas, onto a piece of paper as a poem, onto a wall in your home as a color. Maybe it's time to reconnect to your lover. Maybe it's time to create some intentional giving and receiving cultivation. Maybe it's time for healing with your partner. Maybe it's time to reconnect to spirit. Maybe it's time to just say thank you a hundred times until you're crying. Maybe it's time to bless something. Maybe it's time to, as I mentioned earlier, create a sacred space for real. Put your stones there. Put a poem there, a quote there, a candle, a flower. Make it simple. A little card. Your paintbrushes. I'm looking at mine right now and I'm seeing all of these (laughs) things. A little orchid, two crystals, three cards from my Practice You deck, one from Gabby's deck, a picture of Ama, a quote from my teacher, Yoga Rupa, a little candle from Nadia. Maybe it's time to just give back. Maybe it's time to really just stop what you're doing and think about who needs you and go and be there for somebody. Maybe it's time to just start keeping your word in a new way. Maybe it's time to be uncomfortable and take responsibility and be a steward for the earth. Be a steward for your own happiness. I have a feeling we're going to have a lot of fun here. And I think this is where episode one should end because I've given you lots to think about. I want to thank you for being here. In episode two, I have one of my favorite conversations of all time with my dearest, bestest friend, Ali Bogard, with whom I teach a few times a year. She's considered one of the luminaries in the yoga and meditation space, and I am considering all of us very fortunate to have her voice here so soon in episode two. Keep writing, keep looking inside, keep sitting, keep your practice of stillness alive so that you can come to know yourself in the best way possible and really appreciate yourself and really give yourself the compassion and the love that the divine would love to give you. And I think from here, there's no stop.